Hi, and welcome to today's on-demand recorded webinar utilizing Rethink's EDU version 10.0 data collection app. You can utilize Rethink's data collection app by downloading it to your smart device. Please refer to the attached PDF to this on-demand recorded webinar of the list of devices that this app is supported on. Download this by searching Rethink EDU version 10.0. As you can see here, the, the image is consistent with Rethink Ed logo and our gold bar graph image above. You want to log in with the same username and password that you use to log in to the Rethink Ed web-based platform. Oops, one second there. Typed my username in correctly there. All right. Once logged in to the app, the first main screen that you're going to see here is a list of all the students that you're currently linked to that are a part of your caseload. You can select and collect data on multiple students at one time. And you can also come in here and select multiple goals for multiple students to collect data on at one time. By selecting the student, selecting behaviors, which behavior, and then also skills by selecting skills and which skills you would like to collect data on. As you select these, you'll be able to continue to take data on multiple students and multiple behaviors or skills at the same time. For the purpose of today's on-demand recorded webinar, we're gonna look at each individual student one at a time and each uh, lesson or skill one at a time or each behavior one at a time so that we can get a full application uh, and le learning how to utilize the app with different types of data collection method as well. So first here, we're going to look at our behavior student. We're going to select their name, come up to the right hand side, hit that arrow at the top right. And then again, here's our student. We're going to select either skills or behaviors for the student. They only have behaviors that we're recording data on. And we want to come in here and select hitting. We might also want to select tantrum. We can record data on multiple behaviors at one time. But again, we're just going to look at our hitting example. Select that, come up to the right hand side, hit that arrow. And again, you'll be able to see the different goals that we want to collect data on. Now you're gonna see at the top, you'll see it where it says skill and then also behavior. You're gonna be able to toggle by selecting either skill or behavior going back and forth to see the different skills or behaviors for that particular student. So for this student, we're just looking at our behaviors right now, specifically that hitting behavior. You can come in here and see that we are using a frequency data count, just simply that little plus button. And anytime that you observe hitting behavior, you need to be able to record that as everyone is safe and transition and you can open up your app and hit that plus button to record the frequency of hitting behavior. So I recorded three instances of hitting behavior here. You might also want to collect your behavior assessment data or your antecedent behavior consequence ABC data. You'll see that ABC link directly above that little three where you're going to be able to select ABC and again be able to record that ABC data. So we're going to come in here and we're going to select the time that this occurred. So this might have happened from 1220 to 12.25 p.m. The behavior was hitting. We're gonna select that. The context and activity was that this was happening during academics. The antecedent right before, what happened right before the behavior of hitting occurred, well, a task or command was provided to the student. What happened directly after hitting behavior occurred? Well, we've redirected the student to the activity, the academic task, if you will. And then what do we think that possible reason or function is for that particular observation moment? We believe that student was engaging in hitting behavior to avoid doing something or avoid doing that academic task. 
We can select notes and we can write our notes of any additional information that we need here as well. Hit save at the top right hand corner. And again, we've entered in all of this A, B, C information in our time here as well. And we're gonna come up, scroll up to the top, and we're gonna hit done. Now I've recorded my ABC data for that and the frequency of that. That happened three times. And now we can come at the very, very top where it says sync and sync that data. When I do that, it's going to automatically transfer that data to my student's profile on the web-based platform, as well as automatically graph it for me. That was an example of our behavior student. Next student that we're going to look at is our student here, student duration. Again, we're going to look at one student at a time. So we're going to select that student, go to the right, uh, top right-hand corner, hit that arrow, and again, begin taking data on this particular student. We're going to select that arrow, and as you can see, this student only has skills. We're going to select that arrow next to skills, and it's going to open up all of those skill acquisition goals or those IEP goals that we have in the student's learning plan. And again, we're just going to look at one goal at a time for right now, and we might come in here and look at um, waiting for an activity. And again, we're going to select that goal, come up to the right hand corner, hit that arrow. Here's that waiting for activity goal for this particular student. We're going to select the arrow next to T. This is our teaching data. And again, here are our teaching targets. We are targeting that the student's able to wait for increasing periods of time for neutrally preferred items, moderately preferred items, or highly preferred items. So again, when you're engaged with that particular student and you want to begin taking data and see how long they're able to wait, we're gonna come in here, select that little button next to that particular teaching uh, target. And again, that timer, again, this is duration, just looking at time, that timer is going to start automatically for you and begin recording the duration or the amount of time your student is able to wait. You can record data on multiple targets at the same time. So if you wanted to do you know, another target at the same time, again, you can select that and it will also record the duration data for that as well. Once complete, you need to hit the stop button or just select it again, select it again. It will timestamp and stop it on that particular time. So you can see here 31 seconds or 14 seconds. Once complete, we're gonna to go to the top right hand corner, select sync. And again, all of that data will be automatically synced to that particular goal for that particular student and graphed automatically for us. Next, we're gonna look at our frequency data collection student, this one student, select that one student, go up to the top right, select our arrow. And again, here's our student. We're gonna select that arrow to see the different behaviors. So we're tracking non-compliance for behaviors. And then we can open the little arrow next to skills and see all of the skills that we're tracking. So for one student, you can track their non-compliance and maybe playing with peers at the same time. But again, for right now, we're just going to select one of our skills here. We're gonna select playing with peers as our goal. Come up to the top, hit that arrow to begin recording that data. So here's playing with peers. We're gonna select that triangle next to the T and open up all of our teaching targets. So for this particular student, we wanna track when the student in initiates play with peer, when they join ongoing play with peers, or when they respond to a peer's play initiation and actually accepts that invitation to play with the peer. So again, we can record, this is a simple frequency data count. So during any of those throughout the day, especially during opportunities for social skills um, on, at recess or at lunch, et cetera, we can, or physical ed, we can come in here and select that little plus button, tallying when these particular um, tar teaching targets, when this occurs with the student initiating, joining, ongoing, or responding to peers' play initiation. Record those, frequency data collection, Come up to the right hand side, hit sync, and that will sync your frequency data. We're gonna to come to the left hand side, top hand 
corner of our screen, hit that little arrow so that we can go right back out to our list of students. So now we're done take, taking data for that particular student. We want to look at our next student, maybe looking at our interval data collection method here. We're going to select that student, come up to the right hand side, hit that arrow. And again, here is our student. We're going to select the arrow to see the different behaviors and skills we have in that student's plan. We're going to look at skills here, specifically just that staying on task goal. I'm going to hit that arrow at the top right hand side of our screen. And then again, select the arrow next to teaching for teaching targets. So you can come in here and see that um, we have two different teaching targets. We want to see uh, and record data on when the student's able to stay on task, specifically the entire whole interval. So we are looking to see if that student is able to engage in this behavior of staying on task throughout the entire interval. We've already set our intervals at that five minute mark. And as you can see here, our intervals are already counting down automatically for us. We're also tracking this across study skills and homeroom as well, so you can see both of those in there. You can come in here, select when that behavior of staying on task occurs. When you're done, scroll up at the top, hit sync. And again, we want to say that that particular uh, behavior occurred. So when it does occur, we want to select that and then come up and select sync at the top right hand side. Hit our arrow at the top left hand side. We're going to be able to come right back out to our student list. And now for this time, we are going to move on to our next student, specifically looking at opportunity based data collection. Again, we're going to select that student select our arrow at the top right hand side, open up our student, the triangle here to look at all of our skills and behaviors. This particular student only has skills in their learning plan. And again, we're going to come in here and we're going to look at different uh, goals. So specifically labeling body parts and pictures, we might select that goal. Again, hit that arrow at the top right hand corner to begin taking data on that skill. We're going to select that arrow next to our T for teaching targets. And again, here are all of our teaching targets that we've previously customized. We're going to take data on nose, ear, mouth, head, leg, feet, and teeth. And again, underneath each target, you're going to see those little square icons. Those represent the number of trials that you're going to complete for each one of those teaching targets. So as you come in here and you're running your trials for nose, did the student get that correct? Give them a plus. They got an incorrect, you give them a minus. Even though I've continued and I've already taken my two trials for data collection and on, on nose, I still can collect more data in the event that I come in here and take data uh, and more trials on that particular target. And again, you can record your data for all of your other teaching targets in here as well that you've collected for that particular opportunity. And once done, come up to the right hand side, hit sync and sync that data. We're going to hit that triangle at the left hand side, bring us right back out to our student list. Next, we're going to look at our student here, our last data collection method. One student at a time, we're going to select that arrow at the top right to begin taking data on this student, specifically looking at task analysis data collection. We're going to select that arrow next to our student's name. Again, we're just looking at skills for this student. Here are all the different lessons in the student's learning plan that we are collecting data on. But for this particular uh, example, we're going to just do this one goal of monitoring self using coping skills. We did task analysis data collection for that one. And we're going to come up to the right hand side, top right hand side, hit that arrow to begin collecting data. We're going to open up that arrow next to teaching for teaching data. And again, because this is task analysis, every time we're looking at, did the student recognize their own emotion, identify a coping skill, use the coping skill, de-escalate themselves, and then eventually return to that original activity location or original demand provided by the teacher. And we want to record for each one of these 
in our task analysis of a series of being able to monitor self. So we're going to hit select right next to recognize on our own emotion. Did the student recognize their own emotion? Yes or no. If they said it did yes, we're going to give them a plus or a correct. Did they identify a coping skill? Maybe you had a visual or a list of different coping skills. They selected a break, a five minute break. So yes, we're going to give them a plus for that. We're going to give them a correct. Did they actually use that coping skill? Did they actually calm down and during that break time that they selected? We're gonna select correct or incorrect. Were they able to fully de-escalate themselves during this break time? Yes or no? Well, the student was not able to fully de-escalate themselves enough to return to the general education classroom. So we're gonna give them a minus or an incorrect on that. And then, did they return to their original activity or location or the original demand? No, we're gonna give them an incorrect for that. They did not return to the general education classroom. We're gonna come up here to the very top, hit sync to sync that data for that particular opportunity for that student. And again, we're gonna hit our arrow on the top left to bring us right back out to our student list. So as you can see here, we have looked at an example for each different type of student in here, each different type of uh, application or use case scenario example, looking at students with behavior goals that you might be taking behavior data on, and then also skill acquisition goals. And then more specifically, looking at different types of data collection method, how to record that on the app, making your life a lot easier with data entry and also saving you a ton of time making sure that you don't have to sit down at the end of that day session or even at the end of that week on a Friday, sit down at a computer with your hard copy data sheets and spend administration time um, entering that data in on the web-based platform to get that graph. When you use the, the app here, that's automatically done for you. So you're just getting all of that time back to yourself to spend it on anything else that you want to as a teacher or an educator um, in the classroom. Uh, and being able uh, to utilize and save yourself some time utilizing this app. You can also collect data on this app without fully being connected to the internet. So in order to do that, please ensure that while you're connected to the internet, you log onto the app, open up all the students' behaviors and skills that you wanna collect data on, then walk into your non-Wi-Fi zone. So maybe out at recess, for example, you're taking data on social skills, and you'll still be able to collect your data on those social skills out at recess. You'll still be able to select sync at the top right hand corner of your screen. When you're out on the recess yard, it will save the data to the app, but you do need to remember that once you are back inside and in that Wi-Fi zone, reconnect to the Wi-Fi, open up your app, and make sure to hit sync again so it automatically syncs all of that data again, straight to the web-based platform so that it graphs it. If you have any questions about how to take data offline and not connected to the internet, please reach out to support at rethinkfirst.com. If you experience any other challenges with our education app at any time, please report these immediately to support at rethinkfirst, R-E-T-H-I-N-K, F-I-R-S-T dot com and report that so that we can support you in being successful with utilizing this app and again saving yourself some time and utilizing your uh, educational technology throughout the school year. Thank you so much for your time today. Take care.